Hey besties, welcome back to the channel. Or welcome if you're new here. If you don't know, my name is Shelby and on this channel we talk about a whole bunch of stuff. Today's video is going to be a little bit different and we're gonna talk about a whole bunch of stuff. So for all my returning subscribers, you guys are used to me talking about like one issue like per video, like dedicating each video to a specific thing. But today we're gonna talk about all the things that have been going on the past few weeks or you know this week. Just things I've talked about on Twitter or on Instagram and things that you guys have asked me my opinion on. And if you guys like this type of video let me know and we can try to make this a thing just let me know how you guys like this okay so we're just gonna dive right into this because i don't want to waste any time i don't know how many things we're gonna talk about so make sure you got your wine your water or your rolling tray or whatever you need to tune in with me and we can get right into this video like who are you to close off earth for legal reasons if any kids are watching this is oregano Um, so first I want to talk about YG and Tyga and their little humiliation ritual because what like I don't care how many people want to say is giving white chicks or like yeah I ever thought y'all was gonna see YG in a wig and me <laughs> like is it uh, I mean Tyga maybe he spends a lot of time with the Kardashians but come on what is this what is this and it's like, when are men gonna stop dressing like women to be funny? Like, I've said it before, for a bunch of people that love to say that women aren't funny, they're only funny when they're dressed up as women. Like, okay. So yeah, they clearly needed some relevance and they got it. So I guess we'll see what comes from it. I was gonna mention this really quick because I mentioned it on Instagram. Chris Brown's album dropped and the deluxe album has 33 songs. And I had pointed that out because, you know, that's a... Masonic number and if you notice with most of theirs there you know those them <laughs> a lot of the times you'll see the number 33 in news articles and they highlight their 33rd birthdays you just see the number 33 a lot surrounding them and he also in one of his latest interviews he was talking to big boy and he said that he's never been abducted but he knows that aliens are real because he's an alien and everybody was sending it to me like he said he's an alien and i'm like he is an alien and they're like what i'm like and janae Aiko's an alien too like i always tell you guys things aren't good or bad like inherently you it's what you do with it janae's running around making healing music even if she's like a puppet five percent of her time i really don't care because the other percentage of the time she's really trying to heal the collective so like what i'm not i'm not trying to stop her shine she did have her little moments you know like maniac and all this stuff, but she's grown she can sing and talk about what she wants it's not like she was pushing it to kids that's where the lines never get blurred with her some of these people live two different lives and the music and on stage than they do in real life and we're gonna get to that anyway so yeah so Chris Brown is an alien like I don't know if you <laughs> there are a lot of star seeds and aliens in our community and our collective just you know doing their thing it's what you do with it he can dance he can sing he can rap he can write he can draw like he can paint skateboarding like he's so multifaceted also I was talking about the hate train I don't understand why there's still a hate train for Chris Brown over the whole Rihanna thing when Rihanna herself forgave him and did music with him and fought on the internet with Carucci over him and all of that stuff way after all of this happened but people like to just forget <laughs> I don't know what more y'all want from that man um that whole situation between him and Rihanna anyway if y'all pay attention or you know listen to anything that people in the industry have said that was like a whole situation to take him down because he didn't do something Clive Davis asked of him allegedly at the Grammy party so yeah and that's on Jaguar right <laughs> And don't take me like, you know, speaking on like their creative sides and all this stuff like as me not recognizing the puppetry because clearly I'm talking about it. He definitely had his moments where he was working for them. Then you can tell when it stopped when they blackballed him and the way they had him, he was just straight up releasing mixtapes for so long 
that if any other artist would have went through that, it would have been done. Like, look at the verses that just happened. Look at all the forgotten singers and stuff. Like, people aren't checking for... Sammy ate that verses, but, like, people are not checking for Sammy. People are not checking for... Even Mario. Nobody's checking for a new Mario album. You're gonna get one because he's been running around doing his rounds for Lucy. There's gonna be a lot of features from him. A lot of... You're gonna be seeing a lot of Mario. But nobody was checking for him. Nobody's looking for him. Chris Brown was blackballed from the industry and team breezy was still going so hard <laughs> like they was not trying to like he was literally surviving off mixtapes he started rapping like you know how many people couldn't have done that and then get back to the level where they are now t t 10 albums and then you can see now you're releasing albums again you start to see the symbolism you start to see the saturn warship on the last few albums you see certain outfits he's wearing they'll throw you in the checkerboard you know on the magazine have you with your eye covered have you on the album with the you know the little symbolism have the numbers showing little things just to show like you remember who's in control <laughs> if you want to keep this billy eilish admitted to having a body double on stage I'm tired of them using this whole body double thing. They're clones. They have clones. Yeah, they do like body double stand-ins, like people that wear the mask and stuff. This is clonery. So when <laughs> people talk about clones being real and things like that, they're telling you, they're telling us. They don't go to all of their performances. They don't do all of those interviews. Sometimes you see your favorite artist and they look a little different this day and you're like, why do they look like that? Why won't they take those sunglasses off? Why is Kanye walking around with a full mask on showing you a hundred other Kanyes around him to tell you how easy <laughs> like yo and then people just like this is art this is creative oh my gosh he's jesus like really quick i want to talk about erica mena calling safari out for supposedly being a and talking to or engaging with DJ Self's daughter while she was 15. Allegedly, whether that's true or not, I don't even want to talk about Safari and the girl. Like, because clearly we all know that's disgusting and him and his own. Everything about them is just attention seeking. Who Like, who knows what's real, what's not. What I want to talk about is people like Erica who wait until they're on bad terms with someone to come out and say this. You knew what he was into and what he was doing while y'all was together and you still chose to stay and have two kids with him. But now that he's with another girl and you're mad that he's not coming home, you want to out him for liking little girls? It wasn't a problem when he was home with you and y'all was on Instagram acting like everything was great while you was popping out babies and ignoring your first child. But now you want to tell the world that he's a but And then this goes to show you how many people in the industry really are but people are too afraid or in this trance or because these are not real friendships they're not real relationships a lot of this stuff is pr and because they're in the same circles six degrees of separation speaking of six degrees of separation i made a twitter post talking about glenn maxwell only getting 20 years but them not letting us know who how, how do you give somebody 20 years for trafficking and then not let us know who she sold them to. Who to who were they giving the? Who, she was just taking kids and just models to nobody, just dropping them off on beaches. Everyone's besties with her, but nobody was involved. Naomi, very like like buddy, buddy, buddy besties. We, then we have Naomi and Harvey. Then we have Harvey and Jay Z. Jay-Z and Beyonce, Beyonce and Naomi, Jay-Z and Ellen, Ellen and Oprah, Oprah and Harvey. Everybody's connected to her, but nobody's a her. Nobody knows what's going on. I'm trying really hard not to say too much because we're trying to keep this like this and not like this. Anyway, I hope you guys are, you know, picking up what I'm putting down. Next, I said we were going to talk about people not being who they are in the music and on stage and in real life. And that number one person right now for me is Chloe Bailey. And I hate that she keeps giving me reasons to talk about her because I feel like it's bullying. And I don't like that. I don't like feeling like I'm picking at someone. But does she see what I'm saying anyway? Who knows? It's just like, girl. I mean, but Beyonce had to go through it when she was going through her rituals too. So mm, we remember those 2007 YouTube days searching up, is Beyonce Illuminati? Like, come on. Like, let's, like, come on. We all remember back then. But it's crazy now how full circle all of that comes because 
back then I used to make fun of it like oh my gosh like all this stuff is so fake like y'all are just haters why are y'all talking about Beyonce <laughs> girl what <laughs> shut up like <laughs> if me now had to sit next to 15 If me now had to sit next to 15 year old Shelby and tell her that Beyonce is not whatever I thought she was back then. Oh, oh, mm. that's why I like I try to tell people like when I'm talking to y'all or like, you know, sharing information, I'm not coming from a space of like holier than thou. And I know something you don't like I'm that's not me. I'm coming from a space of I used to be you like I was literally running around here oblivious signing deals thirsty to be seen in offices singing for people putting myself in like really dangerous situations for this dream you know like when i tell you guys i've like been there done that don't focus your energy on it i'm saying it because i did like i i was consumed in it and some people love it some people will tell you that that is what they want they want to be consumed in that they want that life and that is that's fine but i'm talking to the people who think that it's something that it's not at least if you're gonna love it and you're gonna talk about it and you're gonna tell people this is what you know I'm doing, this is what you need to support, tell them what they're supporting, let them have a choice. They love this whole illusion of choice thing, telling you something that it's not so that you can be on the bandwagon for it and you don't even know what you're supporting. I'm not down for that. That's why even on my Instagram, I leave all of my old posts up from before I figured all of this stuff out, before I was you know, on this journey, so that y'all see where I came from, where like this passion in me comes from. I was never perfect. I'm not perfect now. I don't know everything. Like, I, I wish y'all would stop. This rant is also coming from just like, it, it was a very long day and people on Instagram keep trying me. <laughs> so I just, I just needed to get that out. But yeah, Chloe Bailey, so beautiful, so talented, so silly in the head. Why? Why are you letting these people use you? Why are you pretending to like this? She literally, every time she goes on stage and does all of this over hyper Sasha Fierce, because it's not her doing it. She doesn't remember it. She And she keeps telling us she doesn't remember it. She doesn't know who that is on stage because she doesn't know who that is on stage. Sasha Fierce or whatever baby spirit they might have cut off and gave to her. She knows that it's not her and she's telling y'all that it's not her. Damn, I sound real aggressive. I'm not the violent person. I'm not aggressive. I don't, I don't cuss people out like that. I don't know what happened. And everybody's just like, oh, she's just like Beyonce. And then they play the video of Beyonce. It's two, it's two CDs. It's a double disc. Right. And half of it is really natural, and the songs are all love songs and really vulnerable and more uh, closer to who I really am. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's named I Am. Uh -huh. And then the other half uh -huh. is uh, Sasha Fierce, who was basically who you guys She's saw. She's in that position back she there. She is, Yeah, yes. that's her. That's who y'all saw singing Single Ladies. Over there. It's very different yeah. from, from who, I, who I really am. And that it's a separate entity from her when she's on stage and when she's in interviews and when she's at Like, why do y'all be thinking that they're joking? When somebody tells you who they are, you believe them the first time. Like, that, that took me so long to really understand like my whole life like I don't think I really understood it until like this year when someone shows you who they are believe them the first time when they tell you who because they, they're always going to tell you first and then you try to repaint the colors and no they, they said this is that but I could see you. no they, I just told you who I am what I'm about I, I just let you know why are you trying to make red flags into pink ones like let's stop doing that she keeps licking microphones and doing all these extra things and she gets off stage and she's crying and she's so timid and she's hugging her sister and she doesn't know where she's at or why she did what she did it like it really bothers me like i <laughs> but mk ultra is not real you guys they're not taking over their body so that they'll perform and do things for them telling you to buy things that they've never even used in real life like so when everybody's going to be out of this trance and everything is just going to be seen for what it is and it's just gonna be like wow who who knew mm -hmm. speaking of people waking up out of trances let's talk about this cern portal on july 5th and this is like from the third to the fifth i think i believe or something like that i honestly i don't care about what dates they're putting out i think they've been doing this there's been like pictures of portals in the sky people have been sending to me all these different pictures of like clouds that look like waves sleep patterns are off my dreams feel like reality I feel like I'm watching myself dreaming it's a lot of stuff going on and just I just feel like timelines are merged things are happening that are not supposed to be happening 
and I think CERN has been messing with stuff for a long time. CERN's little logo is literally 666. So anything they got going on can't be too good. They have this giant collider that's supposed to run at double its record energy level. And this is the CERN portal. These are different pictures that you can like find online. So when you look at this, it's like, what are y'all really messing with? And I don't watch Stranger Things, but people online have compared what's going on to Stranger Things. In 2008, CERN made the most complex and powerful machine known to man called the Large Hadron Collider. It has a 17 mile long accelerator, it's 300 feet below the surface, it's halfway in Switzerland and halfway in France. And these scientists are trying to reachieve what happened within the first milliseconds of the Big Bang Theory by smashing tiny protons together until they explode to see what happens. And this is just a close up of the Large Hadron Collider. So in 2012, while doing their research, they came across something called the God Particle. But coincidentally, Homer Simpson actually wrote the formula for the God Particle on a chalkboard in Season 10, Episode 2, in 1998, 12 years before science. The Simpsons know everything. So the God Particle is believed to be what turns things into matter, what connects the luminous world and the dark world. It's also called the Higgs boson because it was first theorized by Peter Higgs in 1964. Basically, the Large Hadron Collider is producing something called antimatter. Antimatter is matter that doesn't need to be acted upon. It needs to be contained all the time. It's unstable, it's uncertain, it's volatile. It has the strength of four atomic bombs. And scientists said they did a study at a college where they contained it and strange things, stranger things, started to happen. So it's believed that this antimatter is a portal to the spiritual world. This is Steve Hawkins, a world-renowned scientist who is also afraid of the power of this machine and said that it could be responsible for the destruction of the entire the entire universe. I said his name was Steve Hawkins. What's the name of the lab in Stranger Things? Oh, okay. It's just a bunch of coincidences, the 4th of July weekend, all this stuff that's going on with Roe versus Wade. Like, there's a lot of energy harvest happening right now. They're taking away women's rights, and Megan Thee Stallion dropped a twerk video, and there was an argument happening about McDonald's and kids that aren't yours, and everybody forgot about women not being able to make decisions with their own bodies. How easily manipulated we are as a, you know, collective. What's gonna happen when they start messing with these particles? Like, every time that there's news about them, something else is going on in the news and people aren't paying attention. And that's when things start zapping and there are loud booms and everybody's collectively feeling changes and Mandela effects and the mass gaslighting, but uh, you know, and last but not least, we are going to talk about Miss Beyonce and all of her symbolism this week. Here's Beyonce with her Four Horsemen symbolism. If you're not familiar with the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, let me refresh your memory. The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse are figures in the Christian religion, first appearing in the Old Testament, where they are named as punishments of God. White Horse, we have pestilence, AKA a fatal epidemic disease. What are we going through right now? a pandemic, the red rider, the red horse, war. <laughs> the red horse is a symbol of war, destruction, anger, passion, and bloodshed. Black horse, famine. What else is happening right now? Food plants are burning down. The price of everything is through the roof. Baby formula shortages, recalls on all of the freaking fruits and veggies. Like everybody is just sitting back like, and finally, we have the pale horse, death. And I'm not gonna be all morbid and be like, oh, cause we're all gonna, no, that's that's not. If you know anything about tarot, then you know that the death card is about rebirth, is about new beginnings, the end of a chapter. For us, it's the end of an empire. And the United States is definitely an empire. And it's definitely time for all of this, not even just the US, but just everything. And it like, just to, reset we need a reset i know you've all seen the memes how long does a civilization last and it's like 250 years it's like how old is the united states 245 years so we only got a little bit of time to get it together <laughs> and here comes queen bee riding in on all the horses <laughs> and everybody's just sitting around like no she's trying to keep us aware she just wants us to know what's going on she's such a woke Y'all are gonna stop playing with me. This is literally, if you haven't read the book, Behold a Pale Horse, I haven't finished reading it. It's a lot and when I get engulfed in books, I just don't wanna do anything else. So I've been trying to limit myself and I give myself a little time. I read a few chapters, <laughs> then I keep it going. And I think I'm gonna restart the book so that I can highlight 
everything i'm gonna do it on my ipad i'm gonna read it on there um i do have the copy with the 15th chapter so thanks for everybody who's concerned if i have it or not i do i have the chapter um if you are going to download the pdf or if you're gonna buy the book online make sure it does have the 15th chapter that's not taken out they try to resell it now and leave that out i didn't get there yet so i don't know what they're hiding exactly but we'll see <laughs> when i get there yeah i think i'm gonna start the book over so i can like highlight things and then i'll make a video for you guys about like the important parts because i know some people don't want to they also have the audiobook on youtube but some people don't want to sit through that and some people don't want to read the book i understand i'm i will try I, it's not a promise but if i can and feel like it i might oh uh, my voice is like almost gone it's like hurting to talk do i have anything else to talk about <laughs> so yeah beyonce with that symbolism and then she drops the sixth song <laughs> on her album break my soul and it's just funny how words are spells and it's titled break my soul instead of won't break my soul even though in the song she's talking about how you won't break her soul and that all and then she's talking about quitting her nine to five and all this stuff and telling y'all to do a bunch of things that don't apply to her because she didn't write this and that has nothing to do with her she's the last person listed on the writing credits because you can't fall in love and quit your job Beyonce doesn't have a job to quit Th this job you know th being Beyonce she's oh my gosh yeah please don't <laughs> lose your you know your, your income because of Beyonce and I know a lot of people are like oh like you don't have to remind people of that people aren't stupid people won't do what their favorite celebrity just told them do we live in the same reality Okay. So, yeah. I think that's enough for today. I really do want you guys to tell me if you like this style of video. I will still be making individual videos on topics, though. Um, yeah. I just wanted to try something new. Test the waters because YouTube updated their terms and agreements and stuff. And I, it's hard keeping up. It's hard. It's hard. But yeah. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Like this video. I love you guys. I will see you guys in my next video. So, I'm going to